Hello, friends. I would like today to read you a book about a marvelous composer, Haydn. This book is called The Child's Own Guide to Great Musicians, Haydn, the story of the choir boy who became a great composer by Thomas Tapper, 1917. Joseph Haydn was born in Rohrau, a little Austrian village not far from Heinberg. The parents lived in a very modest little house. The picture of this house is worth studying and remembering. As you see, it is one story with a thatched roof. The farm buildings are joined to the house itself. The windows look inviting and pretty. They seem to tell us very plainly that it is warm and cozy within. Joseph Haydn was born on March 31, 1732. He used to say that he was born in the night between March 31st and April 1st. Little Joseph Haydn's father and mother were poor. They worked hard and loved music. Joseph's father used to sing in a clear tenor voice, accompanying himself on the harp. At home, little Joseph was called Separal. When the child was old enough, he too began to sing. He quite surprised everyone by his sweet voice. In the neighboring town of Heinberg, there lived a schoolmaster named Franke, who used to visit the Haydens and play the violin. Seperl used to watch him very closely, and one day he too began to play the violin while his father and mother were singing. But he had no real violin, of course, so he had to play on a make-believe one of two sticks. But he sang in tune and kept time with his wooden bow. One day the schoolmaster chanced to come up the street while the little boy was playing his make-believe music. Watching him closely, he saw that he was really fond of music. Then Cousin Frank, as they called him, had a long talk with Sepperl's father and mother. After a while, it was agreed that the little boy should go to Heinberg and there become a pupil of the schoolmaster. They worked hard at the school in those days. Once, when Haydn was an old man, he said, I shall be grateful to that man, the schoolmaster, as long as I live, for keeping me so hard at work. But I used to get more floggings than food. Eek! When he was six years old, Sepperl could stand up like a man and sing masses in the church choir, besides playing a little on the violin and the piano. It once happened that a drummer was needed in a procession in Heinberg. Frank called Sepperl and showed him how to make the stroke. But the boy was so small that he had someone to carry the drum for him, Sepperl following up and beating it as he had been taught. Haydn was very fond of playing the drums and even as a boy tried to learn how to play right. But Joseph Haydn was to do other things. One day a man from Vienna visited the pastor of the Heinberg church. He heard the little boy sing and liked his voice so much that he invited him to become a chorister in a huge church of St. Stephen. He was eight years old when he arrived in the great city of Vienna, still a little farther away from home than he was at Heinberg. There was much else to do in the great church besides singing in the choir. There were music studies, of course, in singing, violin, and piano playing, but there were also school studies to be learned every day. These were religion, Latin, writing, and arithmetic. But one must not think that because Sepperl was a busy musician, he did not love fun like other boys of eight. One day, the choristers sang at the royal palace at Schönbrunn, just outside of Vienna. The scaffolding was still standing about the building, and Joseph climbed to the top. The Empress Maria Theresa caught him at this mischief and gave an order that that blockhead should have a good spanking. Five years after Joseph Haydn entered St. Stephen's, his brother Michael joined the choir. It was just at that time that Joseph's voice began to change. One day when the Empress heard him, she said his voice sounded more like a rooster's crowing than anything else. The choir master, taking the hint, prepared to dismiss him. But before Joseph said goodbye to his schoolmates, his spirit of fun bubbled over again. Someone had left a pair of new scissors where he found them. What should he cut with them? Ah, he knew. He would cut off the pigtail of one of the choir boys. And he did. Joseph Haydn was never lazy. His father and mother had taught him to love work. He was industrious, happy-hearted, and made friends easily. People loved him, and he began to meet those who could help him. One of these was the great poet Metastasio. 
Another was the singing master Nicholas Popora, who taught him music composition in return for which the boy brushed the master's clothes, polished his boots, did anything and everything, even to running errands. And all because he was so anxious to be taught how to compose music. One day he was invited to become music director, or vice kapellmeister, as it was called, in the family of a great man who was known as Prince Paul Anton Esterhazy. Haydn's position in the Esterhazy home gave him just the opportunity he wanted. There was an orchestra, and for it, he composed all sorts of music. When the band was to play for the prince's family and its guests, Haydn and the players were required to wear white stockings and white collars and a pigtail or tie wig. If you could have watched him conduct the players, you would have seen a very short man with short legs, his face pitted with the marks of smallpox. His nose was large, his eyes gray, and of the kindest expression. A butcher in the town where Joseph was living wanted to celebrate his daughter's marriage with fitting music, and was bold enough to ask Joseph to compose a minuet for the occasion. Joseph good-naturedly consented and wrote the Oxen Minuet, and made the butcher and his daughter very happy. People say that soon after the wedding the butcher appeared at Joseph's door leading an ox all decorated with ribbons and with gilded horns. For many years, Haydn remained in the peace and quiet of the Esterhazy family life. But nevertheless, his good work was heard of in distant places. He received many invitations to travel to foreign countries. One of these he accepted. He went to England twice, in fact. The night before he left Vienna, he and Mozart dined together. Do not go on such a long journey, Mozart begged of him. You are too old and you do not know languages enough to travel through so many countries. But, Haydn said, I know one language that is understood everywhere, the language of music. Mozart said farewell to his old friend. They never met again. On the way north along the Rhine, Haydn met Beethoven at Bonn, and it was arranged that Beethoven should study with Haydn on his return to Vienna. When the traveler reached Calais, he took the boat to Dover in England. He was so enchanted by the sight of the sea that he sat on deck all the way to watch it. Never before had he seen such a sight, for we must remember he was born far inland. Most men do their best work in their younger years, but in Haydn's later years he wrote two of his greatest works, The Creation and The Seasons. The Creation is loved by all people. It is one of a group of favorite oratorios which have found a warm place in the hearts of the people. With it stand the Messiah, Judas Maccabeus, St. Paul, and Elijah. Do you know who composed each of these? After the English journeys, Haydn lived quietly in Vienna in what is now known as the Haydn House. Should you ever go to Vienna, you will be welcomed there by the caretaker, who will show you the rooms in which Haydn lived. One day toward the end of his life, he asked his servant to carry him to the piano. While the members of his household stood near him, he played three times, very solemnly, the Emperor's Song. And that is some of Child's Own Guide to Great Musicians, Haydn, the story of the choir boy who became a great composer, by Thomas Tapper.